Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by Native, the makers of aluminum-free, paraben-free, animal cruelty-free, and vegan deodorants that work. My husband has been using Native for a while now and we love it and it works great. Even after exercise, it gives him 72 hours of protection. It smells great. There are lots of different scents to choose from. My husband's favorite scent is this one. This is the charcoal and this is the plastic free packaging. Love this packaging. This is the 2.0 version and 92% of users of the plastic free packaging prefer this, including my husband. You push it up from the bottom and you apply it, it goes on smoothly, and cleanly, and it dries quickly. And it smells great. It's a smell that I associate with my clean, fresh husband. When you're ready to put it away, give it a tap and replace the lid. Boop. We also got aloe and green tea and unscented. The aloe and green tea smells lovely too. Light and clean smelling without being overly perfumed. We really like the plastic free packaging with each deodorant you're saving 37 grams of single use plastic from going into landfills and Native sources their paper for the packaging from responsibly managed forests. And Native is also a proud partner of 1% for the planet, committing 1% of the plastic free sales to environmental nonprofits. Native also has a seasonal line of scents, including the Naughty and Nice line, which includes scents like eggnog and candy cane. So three plastic free deodorants normally go for $39, but use my code ME9 and receive them for 26. Big thanks to Native for sponsoring this video and for allowing me to make better videos for all of you. So today, lovelies, we're going to be going back in time and attempting to recreate McDonald land cookies. Now these were cookies that were sold at McDonald's and I believe in some time in the 1990s they were discontinued. They came in a box. I don't recall ever eating them. I believe they were chocolate chip cookies and ones that were a bit like animal crackers. And looking back at the photos on the internet, the boxes do look very, very familiar. So recently I did a couple taste tests of McDonald's Happy Meals, including the adult Happy Meal and the Halloween McBoo Happy Meals. And in the comments, a few of you lovelies requested that I recreate the McDonald's Land cookies. And here I am to do that. So the first thing I did was go to eBay and find these. And these are actual vintage McDonald's cookie cutters that came in Happy Meals. And these are stamped from 1980. These ones right here, 1980. So these are quite old. These are, yes, how old? These are over 40 years old. Yeah, these are like 42 years old. And then I was able to find this one as well. And this one's a little bit newer. This is from 1986, I believe. This is from 1987. So this is Ronald juggling some McDonald's spheres. So I'm gonna be using these cookie cutters to make cookies. I also did this. I made a McDonald's land cookie box. This box, understandably, is much larger, I believe, than what the original was. This, I believe, is from 1970s sometime, but I saw it and thought I'd recreate it. Yeah, I went the extra mile and did that. Super fun, right? So let's make some cookies to put in our cookie box. But before we make the cookies, let's do a little taste test. These are Benton's Animal Crackers. Benton's is the brand, the house brand from Aldi. And so many people on the internet say these taste almost identical to the original McDonald Land cookies, which I never had. So just for a little bit of a benchmark, let's give these a taste. These were $3.49, I believe, for 13 ounces. So let's give them a taste. Here are the cookies. We have a gorilla, zebra, rhino. Looks like part of a sheep, part of a monkey. There's the sheep. Baboon of some kind, not sure. So in my experience, there are two kind of varieties of animal crackers. There's ones that are more harder and less sweet and more like a teething biscuit. And then there are ones that are kind of more like this, a little bit more like a cookie or shortbread. Uh, let's give this a taste, here we go. Mm -hmm. The animal cookies that I remember growing up with, my mom would get them on occasion for me, came in a box with a little string. I believe Nabisco makes them, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and these ones taste similar to those. Although I remember those ones to be a little bit more crumbly. These are quite firm. They have a kind of lemony vanilla flavor to them or citrusy vanilla flavor to them, quite hard. Mm-hmm. Lightly sweetened, 
but not the other variety of animal cracker, which are, like I said, more crackerish. I prefer this kind and pretty good. They also kind of have a short bready, but slightly dissolvable crumb texture to them. Not as crumbly as a shortbread, a little firmer. So since I don't have the originals to taste, we're gonna use this as our little benchmark to see how successful our homemade version is. So let's go ahead and get started. So the recipe I'm going to be adapting today comes from Bigger Boulder Baking, and I'll put a link down below to the original. Righty, in a large bowl, because we are grown up and we know that a large bowl is good for using an electric mixer with, we're gonna be creaming some room temperature butter. And I'm gonna be using just a little over a stick. Make sure the butter is at room temperature so we can mix it easily. Now to the butter, we're gonna be adding some sugar and some honey. That was a quarter cup of sugar and two tablespoons of honey. This is honey that came out of my own hives. If you haven't seen my beekeeping videos, that's on my other channel. It's from a few years ago, but I still do keep bees. You can check that out. I'll put a link to it down below. I'm gonna cream this together until it's light and fluffy and pale yellow in color. A little tip, if your butter is cold, one way to get it up to room temperature is to place your butter on a plate and then have a glass of boiling water next to it. Then cover the whole thing with a bowl, let it sit for five or 10 minutes and your butter will be nice and soft, but not melted. All right, light and creamy. And now we're gonna add one egg. And one teaspoon of extract. Now from the King Arthur Flower website, I learned of this. This is princess cake and cookie bakery emulsion. Have you ever heard of this before? I had not. And they said that this is the smell. Apparently my oven is ready and it wants to interrupt me, but that's all right, it's all good. This is the magic ingredient to getting that lemony cookie flavor that you find in animal crackers. And I, I don't know why it's called princess cake and cookie. Uh, and it's an emulsion, it's not an extract. So there's gotta be some artificial flavors in that. I don't know. We wanna get the authentic taste, so we're doing this. Alrighty, one teaspoon of fresh princess. Whoa, look, it comes out like that. That's why it's called an emulsion. Look, it's like milky. Ooh, okay. In that goes. And whisk that in. Scrape down the sides. When I looked on the box of Benton's, it just says natural flavoring. It doesn't say specifically what kind. So maybe that is the secret, right? Okay, now we need one teaspoon of baking powder. My one teaspoon is covered with princess cake. So let's use two half teaspoons. And we're gonna add some flour, two cups. And I'm gonna gradually add this in as well. And that's basically our dough. This is getting pretty tough, so I think the rest I'm gonna do by hand. So once we form this into a dough, we are going to wrap it and let it rest for half an hour or so, and that makes it easier to handle. And we're also gonna put it in the refrigerator and that'll kind of firm up the butter a bit. So chilling it, that will stiffen the dough up a bit and make it easier to cut out. Alrighty, I'll see you in a little bit. lovelies let us roll out our dough now the way my cookie cutters are there's a lot of detail in these cookie cutters and I'm imagining that they're gonna want to stick so I'm gonna make sure I flour these really well and make sure that the dough is not too thick so that these won't be hard to extricate we shall see I think I'm gonna work with half this at a time it's a lot of dough and use some flour to dust everything so nothing sticks. And 
and make sure to move the dough constantly so that it too doesn't stick. Thick enough to get the impression of all of these details, but not so thick that my cutter will get buried. So I'm gonna use a pastry brush and really get flour into all those nooks and crannies of Grimace. And when I bought these on eBay, there was some residual dough, so I made sure to give these a very good cleaning. There's some vintage cookie dough in there as well. <laughs> Let's see how this works. All right, Grimace, here we go. All right, I hope you come out. Well, dough is in there. <laughs> now how do we get the cookie out? Okay, this is looking good. Okay, here we go. Yes. Come on. Come on, Grimace, we gotta get your name. Ta-da! Hooray! Look! Perfect cookie. Yes! Grimace looks so good. Yes, yes, yes! I even got his mouth. Ha ha ha! Okay. Yes, I am so pleased. Okay, let's see if we can get Similar results with Ronald. So again, flour all those little nooks and crannies. Flour the surface of the dough a bit. And let's try to get Ronald in here. Lift. Ooh, this one just came out on its own. Nice! Ooh! Okay. Yes, this one turned out lovely as well. Ta-da! Oh my goodness, yes. Now let's do juggling, Ronald. I don't think he's, I don't know, is he juggling? Press hard so we get all those details. Okay, here we go, lift. Okay, this one, like Grimace, looks like it's a little bit stuck. Oh no, at least this part's lifting out. Okay, good. This one has more detail in the hands, come on. This one's a little sketch. Ooh. Whoa, this one has a ton of detail. Oh my goodness. This one was very, um, it fought me a little bit because of the feet and the deep little tiny hands, but we, we did get a whole one, <sighs> but we got one. Yeah. Alrighty. So I'm going to continue doing this and my light is falling. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm gonna pop these into a preheated 350 degree oven and bake them for 12 to 15 minutes until they are baked but not too golden. And then we're gonna let them cool for 15 minutes before we give them a taste. Alrighty, see you when these cookies are done. Alrighty, my lovelies, my homemade McDonald land cookies are finished and they look so good. Look at them, so stinking great. They did not spread at all and they smell terrific. I smell more of a kind of vanilla scent as they were baking as opposed to that lemony scent. Look at this box, I love it so much. My box turned out so great and I will fill it up with the cookies once they're completely cooled, but let's go ahead and give them a taste. Now, Quimus was my favorite, it's so cute. And this one was more finicky because there was more details, like the little toes and hands wanted to get stuck in the cookie cutter. But the McDonald's ones came out great. Lots of detail. And let's give them a taste. I'm gonna eat Gormus. Gormus is my favorite. Alrighty, let's give them a taste. Here we go. It's a Ducky Moss. Hmm. The first thing I noticed is that it's lacking that big crunch, you know? the crunch of the Benton's animal crackers. Mm. 37 more seconds. Granted, these are still slightly warm. Maybe they'll stiffen up a bit more once they're completely cold, but the flavor is really good. I think the princess cake and cookie emulsion tastes very similar to the Benton's. In fact, let me grab one of those. Mm-hmm. See how that's so crunchy? Much crunchier, and now that I've tasted it, a little bit sweeter. These are very light on the sweetness, which I like, especially if you're gonna be giving these to young children. Oh, okay. 
these are done. And what's also different from these, these have a little bit more of a short bready texture, a little bit more crumbly, and a really great butter flavor, which doesn't exist, in my opinion, in the animal crackers or the Benton ones, or what I imagine the McDonald's cookies taste like. Having said that, this is a good cookie. Mm -hmm. If I were to make these again, I would use a little bit more extract. I just used one teaspoon. I would use one and a half. I'd never used this before, so I didn't know how strong it was going to be. But in terms of flavor profile, it tastes exactly like an animal cookie, which is a combination to me of a lemony flavor, a slightly vanilla nuttiness, and just a hint of kind of a nutmeggy spice. In terms of recipe, this is a good cookie, but it is not an exact dupe of the animal crackers perhaps rolled out a little bit thinner so they're a little bit crisper and harder mm -hmm. or made with margarine instead of butter i really taste the butter in these which i quite like makes them taste like shortbread but it doesn't taste like an animal cracker which i feel could taste more neutral it's more about this flavoring than the buttery flavor having said that these cookies are delicious and the cookie cutters worked out great i was expecting a lot of dough getting stuck in these but did not. Alrighty, my lovelies, thanks so much for watching and big thanks to Native for sponsoring this video. Three plastic free deodorants normally go for $39, but if you use my code EMMYMADE9, you can receive them for $26. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends, follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye!